Hello, beautiful. You are listening to episode 80 of the Africana Woman podcast. Chulu is my name. I am a writer, self-branding coach, entrepreneur, and mentor. This show is the home of African women's stories. We share ideas, triumphs, challenges, and lessons from our perspective as women. Our library is a step to cementing our place in history. Her story, your story, is powerful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to all the new listeners and welcome back to the Africana Woman family. Please hit the subscribe button or visit AfricanaWoman.com to become an official Africana Woman visionary. I remember when I was starting the Africana Woman podcast and I was lost, 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 lost. No equipment, no systems, no training in editing. It was just crazy. But two years down the line, I am proud of the podcast and how far I have come. The mission of Africana Woman has always been to tell more African women's stories. Therefore, we are helping you start and maintain your podcast. If you have a burning idea and you are interested in launching a podcast, but you don't know where to start from, contact us at AfricanaWoman at gmail.com. Your story is important. Listen up, guys. Ah! We are 19 conversations away from 100 episodes on the Africana Woman podcast. Oh my goodness! Like if I could scream, it'd hurt your ears, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> the level of excitement that I have. Ciao. There was a time I could not even see the possibility of getting to 20 episodes, but we are almost at a hundred. What? Oh my days. So, you know, this has to be a big deal. Drum roll, please. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> For the 100th episode, we will have a live podcast recording. Yes, with a live audience right here at Kumushi Garden in Kabwe. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. let me calm down. Sweetie, if you want to be one of the 100 guests, please go to the show notes and sign up. Listen, it's going to be lit. And if you want to be a sponsor for this event, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> you can also get in touch. So the link is in the show notes. Even if you're not in Zambia, I still want you to participate. You can send us a voice note on our hotline. Or if you have a burning follow-up question for a previous guest, send those through as well. And we will answer them at the celebration. The 100th episode is coming up, people. The countdown has officially started. All roads lead to Kabwe on September 24th. See you there. Yes! So there are so many good things going on, but I'll tell you more after today's conversation. The Vivian K is the queen of joy. It is so exciting to share this conversation with you. Enjoy. Vivian K is the founder and CEO of Kinky Curly Yaki, a premium textured hair extension brand for black women that she bootstrapped to over $6 million in revenue. Her presence and genuine desire to continuously learn and grow while keeping it real quickly made her a personality who transcended the title of founder and CEO. Ultimately, she organically grew her personal platform by exchanging tips and tricks that she learned on her personal entrepreneurial journey. As a business and empowerment expert, TV, radio, and podcast personality, Vivian sets out to empower, uplift, and educate her audience into action. Along with her philanthropic efforts through mentorship, she has worked with many notable brands such as Shopify, Unilever, LG, Porsche Canada, RBC, BMO, American Express Canada, and Rogers Media, to name a few. Listen, guys, I am so excited to have Vivian K on the Africana Woman podcast, and I just want to extend a warm, warm welcome to you. Thank you. That was a that was great. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Ah, uh, so. 
I really wanted to just get a little bit more insight into your background. I know um, you have roots in Ghana and Togo, which I was I found really interesting because usually um, I see Ghana and I was like, oh, Togo as well. That's interesting. Was that your mom or your dad? Ah, uh, well, it's actually both my parents' mothers are from Togo, oh, wow. and then both their fathers were in, are from Ghana, and they both grew up in Togo, mm-hmm. and then of course, you know, went to Ghana, you know, to prosper, I guess you could say, and also that's where I was born. So I was born in Ghana, uh, Tema, to be exact, Community Nine, no, Community Five. Shout out to Community Five in Ghana or in Tema. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was born there. And then my dad came over to Canada first. And then we followed him about, you know, a, a year or so after my mom and myself. And it was, you know, it was Canada was cold from what my mom was telling me. She was. <laughs> you know, it is like, cold in comparison. Yeah. yeah. You know, the four seasons and everything. But uh, but yeah, so Ghana has been. You know, we we go back and forth. We were supposed to go last year, um, Mm -hmm. but that didn't happen. My parents snowbird every year, so they go back and forth from Ghana to here now. They are retired. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, but yeah, Ghana is Ghana and Togo, actually. So, yeah. Lovely. So your sisters weren't born by the time you're immigrating to Canada? Uh, Well, I had an older sister. So I had an older sister. She, She stayed behind. Um, and then came over a few years later. And then my, I, so I have three sisters. And then two of my sisters were born here in Canada. I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what really made your parents decide to move to Canada? Because they did actually, they moved from Togo, came, went to Ghana. And then they said, okay, now we're going across all that water. I don't actually know. <laughs> That's a good question. But I think in the 70s, I know the prime minister at the time, which was uh, Pierre Trudeau, he had, they had some sort of immigration, you know, immigration plan with the crown, you know, countries that were in, within the British colonies, right? So, mm. um, you know, Ghana was one of those countries and my, my uncle was already here. So my uncle sponsored my father to come over and then my father sponsored us to come over, you know, because Canada was growing, you know, Canada needed um, immigrants to help grow the country. And so they thought it was a great opportunity. And, and here we are, you know, almost 40 years later. <laughs> yeah. And how has the immigration experience been? I always find it a strange place to be in because uh, how long is one an immigrant, you know? Because <laughs> mm. I know some people, like, for example, um, I, I was having a conversation with another guest and, you know, she was a refugee and then immigrated to Australia. But then she, that means like, how long do you have that title? And when do you really feel like you're part of that community and that country? Well, you know, I've always, I've always felt part of the community. So there's nothing, you know, there's no doubt about that, but I think really it's when you, you, <laughs> cause I call myself an immigrant because I wasn't born here. Right. And mm-hmm. so it wasn't until I had my son. So then technically my son is Canadian, you know, 100. And so, so then to me, that's like, that's when it stops. Right. So when you have, you know, generations, you know, that have basically benefited off of, you know, the, I guess the risks you could say, or, you know, the, the security or even the vision that your parents had to, to bring them to this country, to bring themselves to this country. Right. Yeah. It never, you know, I always refer to myself as an immigrant because, uh, you know, I think we're all immigrants, especially in Canada, because there is an indigenous people here and we're all settlers. We've all settled on their land and, and I'm grateful to be on their land and to be able to, um, you know, to have the opportunities that I have, but it's also sad how the land was taken away from them. Right. And even now they're, they're finding mass graves of children that went to these schools where, you know, these, these churches tried to beat the culture out of them. Right. So, yeah, Canada's, you know, Canada does, you know, compared to the United States, everyone thinks, oh, Canada's great. Canada's great. But Canada has a history. Canada has its issues. You know, we have racism just as, you know, the United States does. It's just quieter. It's just more polite in Canada. Mm, but right. still, you know, every every country has its problems. Grass is always greener on the other side. So, mm. so yeah. 
So how much do you think of your Ghanaian slash Togo roots do you draw on in terms of the way you live and just express yourself? Because you are, you are so vivacious and just, I love watching you like on social media. It always gives me a smile. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I just wanted to know about that. Well, thank you. Um, I would say it has, it has, it it certainly has its, um, its effect on me. You know, I, I grew up, Ghanaian, right? My parents, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm from Ghana. So again, because I'm from Ghana, um, I'm not the typical Ghanaian that you meet. Most people from Ghana that you meet speak tree, but we're Ghana ways. So, you know, we, I spoke up with two, three different languages being spoken in the house, right? So that has its effects. So, you know, I remember going to school when we were younger and my mom would make up these words for things because she didn't know the English word for it. Or, you know, it was her version of the English word for it. And we would go out in the world and we'd be speaking these words. And people were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? That's not a conventa? Like, what's a conventa? It's a conventa. And really, a conventa is a converter, which is the remote for the TV. <laughs> right? But it's funny because to this day, even mm-hmm. with my own son, I make up, like, I'll just say words. And it's like, yeah, give me the click click. <laughs> and, and and it's the remote, right? I just it's, <laughs> so like you know, and 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 I think it's great. You know, my sisters are like, "Oh, don't learn English from your auntie," and I'm like, "No, come and learn." You know, <laughs> because um, but it, it's had you know, it's had a great effect. You know, I attribute a lot of my my hard work and drive to being a Ghanaian because I liked you know my mom. Before she came over, she worked in the gar- uh, the gardens. She worked in the markets of Mokola, right? So she carried me on her back as she was being an entrepreneur by necessity, mm. right? Mm. Mm-hmm. And you know that's one of the things that I'm grateful for about being in Canada is that I'm I'm an entrepreneur by by choice as opposed yeah. to necessity, and I think that's the big that's a big privilege that we have here. Um, that you know even if I was to have a business and it didn't work out. I can fall back on government programs. I can fall back on, you know, on savings. I can do, but my mom 40 years ago couldn't do that. So she had to hustle. So I have that spirit in me. It's had a yeah. great effect. I was actually very curious about that. So did your mother continue to be entrepreneurial when she came to Canada? You know, it's a little bit harder to be entrepreneurial in Canada when you don't have the support system. Hmm. Right. So uh, you know, she was here with four girls and my father, you know, worked a full time job, um, you know, so she would dabble in entrepreneurism. But, you know, it's not the same, you know, it's not the same as, you know, back home where you could you could just wake up one morning, and be an entrepreneur here. You could do the same. But, you know, there's the red tape and the paperwork and the banking and the this and the that. So, um, you know, I always like to say that I'm I'm my mother's wildest dreams, not my ancestors, my mother. Because, you know, I'm doing all the things that she, you know, she didn't even know were po- was possible, especially as a, as a woman. Right. And so, and every day I surprise her, you know, <laughs> being a single mother, I surprised her, you know, <laughs> being an entrepreneur, running a million dollar business, I surprised her. And she's just like, oh, like Vivian, <laughs> like, I didn't know. Like, and I'm like, well, mom, I'm doing it for you. You couldn't do it. So I'm going to do it yeah. for you. I heard in one of your interviews that you thought you were the black sheep of the family. And I find it curious. No, I am the black sheep of the family. Why, why does it, you, okay, why, why would you call yourself the black sheep of the family? Oh, well, you know, I don't see black sheep as a bad thing. It's not a bad okay, thing. That's, no, yeah, it does that's not it have is. negative yeah. connotations. No, 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 no. Okay, it just okay. means, you know, I have three sisters. You know, even when you have more than I would say probably two kids. There's always that one child that's just, you say, as my mom used to say, I say A, you say B. (laughs) And so I was that child that would, my mom would say A, I would say, well, what about H? Mm. Have you thought about X, mom? (laughs) You know? And so with, you know, and then with my sisters, they were like, okay, A, A, A. And I was like, you know what? W. Just because. (laughs) Why not? Just Just because. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where do you think it really comes from? Because you show up, you know, with audacity and just being your authentic self. Where do you think you get that from? You know, I think it for me it's natural. Uh, you know, because mm. you know, Vivian means lively one. Mm. Right. So mm-hmm. it's already 
it's already embedded in my in my DNA, right? And I think what it is, is, you know, with every generation, especially as women, you know, we get to, I guess we get more freedom, mm-hmm. right? And so then, you know, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, you know what, I'm my mother's child. Because sometimes I'll see her doing something and I'm like, oh, that's me. Like, mm-hmm. I do that. And so then me, I'm just a, a reiteration of my mother. But, you know, mm-hmm. she had to keep her liveliness under wraps because you know you're a lady you have to do this you have to do that oh you know Uh, and but here you know especially being you know I I, I guess first generation being in Canada you know being 2021 it's not 1963 right this is 2021 where we have you know there's the you know there's feminism there's you know sexuality and there's all these things that my mother didn't have that I'm able to express louder right so It's just, you know, and also it's just been, you know, technology has helped to do that too, right? Because my mother didn't have access to the information that I have access to, right? So, you know, all she had was what her mother told her or what her sisters told her or what her aunties told her. Whereas, you know, I have that, but then I could just jump on the internet and find out exactly what the answer should be, right? So for me, it's just, this is just the way I am naturally. What you see is what you get. A lot of people are always surprised when they see me in real life and they're like, oh, so you are what you, and I'm like, yeah, I'm too old to be faking. I'm (laughs) too old to be faking, you know, a whole personality. So this is me. This is what you get. You have spoken about, you know, being a college dropout and experiencing depression during university time. Did you know you were depressed? Because I know depression is a a very sensitive conversation, especially in African communities. So I just wanted to learn a bit more about what that experience was like for you and then how you did get help, or if you did. um, Yeah. Uh, did I know I was depressed? No, because this was about, you know, 20 years ago when the internet really wasn't like the internet cost a lot of money to get on, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, you know, information was really slow to ke- to access. So I just knew I wasn't myself. And actually, so um, how I got treatment for it was because of my mother. My mother saw that I wasn't myself. You know, because I've always been the rebellious child, she had to threaten me. She's like, I see you. I know you. I born you myself. I know how you are and you are not yourself. So if you don't come home so you can go see the doctor, I will never speak to you again. You know, the good old African mama threat. (laughs) And, you know, thank God she threatened me. Because I don't know where I would be today because I was ashamed of how I was feeling. You know, I was using things like alcohol in order to numb that pain because I just didn't understand why I was feeling this way. And, it, you know, so I, I, you know, I ended up moving back home. My, my mother t- took me to the doctor. I ended up on medications, but I've never been a medication person. And so then I remember being on, uh, you know, an antidepressant and I, and it made me feel great. Like it was a good way to get out, you know, get, get out of it. So what I described it as, it was like, it was like, it was like the the sky had suddenly cleared. It was like, I was seeing colors for the first time. It was really interesting, but then I didn't want to have to use medication in order to feel better. So I ended up going cold Turkey off the medication. And then that's when I found doing things like exercise right? Going and, you know, I started running, I started running five and 10K races. That helped to bring me peace. That helped to, that was my antidepressant. And to this day, I still exercise, I still walk. I can't run anymore because, you know, my joint cohorts, that's my hip. (laughs) But I still, I'm still pretty active. I try and be as active as possible because that's my natural antidepressant. So, you know, luckily, you know, I wasn't, I didn't, I felt shame, but I didn't feel shame from my family. Mm, So that was a blessing. And so I was able to get the help that I needed. And then of course, being Vivian, I I did it my way. But it's not, if you're feeling depressed, well, first of all, it's okay to feel not okay. It is okay. Mm. But you, you just have to, (sighs) because I know what it's like to be at, to hit that bottom. It's really hard to tell people, you know what? It's okay. You'll get out of it. But honestly, and I'm telling you because, and I'm only saying it because I've been through it. There is the other side. 
you just, but you just have to take it day by day, hour by hour, week by week, whatever it is, take your time, but you can't stay down there. You cannot. So you have to just do little things every single day to help climb out of that, that, that deepness, that darkness. And that's something that I, that I forced myself to do because I said, no, I cannot continue down this way. Otherwise I won't be here. So you just have to have that resolve. You have to have that, that resolve in your heart and in your soul saying, you know what? I know it feels terrible right now, but there is, you know, the sun shines every day. The sun shines every single day. Sometimes it's cloudy. Sometimes it's hazy, but the sun is there. So you just have to wake up every morning and say, okay, I'm going to try again today. I, well, in 2019, I did experience a, a bout of um, depression. And, you know, I reached a point where I just said enough is enough. I had been in bed, not doing anything for three days, hadn't eaten, not sleeping, just sleep, crying, you know. And I got to the third and I just thought enough is enough. I have to get help, you know. And you have to just do what you have to do to get back to that that space where you feel like yourself you know yeah, absolutely yeah yeah totally relate with that so you have a very handsome young man and it's interesting with i guess with time um how people respond to single mothers and i know in an african community oh she's a single mother i'm a single mother as well so i've been there <laughs> and you know for me personally i was devastated because i know all the connotations that are on top of that you know even just having to announce that oh i I'm pregnant that was like its own issue and own drama and I just wanted to find out from you what has that journey been like in terms of you just wanting to be the best mother that that you can be what what made you make that decision instead of or did you did you have any reservations about okay this journey that I'm going to take um you know especially in an African community? Well, you know, one of the things was, one, I was older, right? So I was 36 when I had my son. So at that point, I'd already been through the whole, when are you getting married? When are you having a baby? When are you going through all that, right? And so when I, you know, when I when I came up pregnant, it was like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, well, it's better than nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And so, you know, especially when you're, you know, when, you know, you're in your 36 and it's like, okay, well, you know, and even myself, I was like, well, I am 36. It's not like I'm 23, mm. you know, and, and, and I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I've, you know, I've, I, at that point I was pretty established. I just started my business and I was like, well, might as well. <laughs> right. And so, and so I, I actually made it a point to, to not, to be, I guess, because I always like to say I'm a possibility model. I don't like to say I'm a role model. Don't follow me. Okay. Don't follow me. Mm. But what I like to show is what's possible. Right. Mm. So is being a single mother running a million dollar business easy? Absolutely not. But it's possible. Right. It's, it's going to be there, you know, especially this past, these past 18 months were some of the hardest months of my life in every aspect, but I came out and I came out gold. Right. And so I'm, I'm making it a point to, to do what I need to do in order for my son to see that you can't let circumstances bring you down or hold you down. You, you know, circumstances could bring you down. That's There's nothing wrong with that. But you can't let them hold you down. So I'm not going to let the fact that I'm a single mother hold me back. You know, so then what do I do? I I have a support system. I have my mother. I have I have my parents. I have my sisters to help me. Right. And I and I rely on them to help me raise my son. And I'm and I'm eternally grateful for that. But that's a sacrifice I had to make. Right. So I had to move from a big city where I was living, you know, the glamorous, you know, rich auntie life to a, you know, back to a smaller town where it felt like I was taking <laughs> steps backwards. But sometimes those steps backwards are the steps you need to, to do, you need to take in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I want to show my son the type of woman he needs to look for. 
He needs to look for a woman who, who doesn't need him, but wants him. Mm. right a woman who has her wits about her a woman who isn't just going to just lay down and die and you know and I also made it a point to be happy when I was having him because I always wanted him to know that he was a he's a blessing in my life he's not a burden right and I think that's that's what a lot of people think single mothers feel like their children are burdens they are not they are blessings And I'm absolutely certain I wouldn't be where I am in this life if it wasn't for him. I, you know, I'm not going to be single forever. You know, uncle, uncle is coming. I know it. Uncle is coming. (laughs) We know. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us more about the Founders Fund, which you started last year, because I, I think that really just shows your heart for women, for people, and, you know, just helping them to get past all of these limiting beliefs and, you know, just go shine and be bright out of the world. Yeah. So Founders Fund is actually some, it's an organization that I'm a part of. So it actually started in 2019 and it's a digital accelerator for women identifying entrepreneurs who need a leg up. So whether that be resources, whether that be funding, whether that be community. And what I saw, like, and it was something, it's a cause that's close to my heart because when I started being, when I started my business, my first business back in 2006, there weren't resources like this that were obvious to me, right? And so then it's a cause that's very close to my heart. I wanted to help as many women as possible. And especially with my being an African woman, a black woman, I always find that, and I, and especially if you're in North America or even Europe, you might understand this, but if you don't see yourself somewhere, you don't go. So I purposely put myself in places where we we don't typically see ourselves so that people know, because once you see me there, okay, if she's there, then it's okay, I can go, right? So then that's what I make it a purpose to do. And Founders Fund happens to be one of those, one of those places. You know, right now we're on, it's summer, so we're on hiatus, but they're coming back, you know, bigger and better in, I think, November. And, you know, I'm coming back as a mentor to help mentor more female owned business owners to help them do the big things and have the confidence to do those things. Because sometimes it's not necessarily, you don't know, it's just, you don't have the confidence to, for, to share that knowledge, right. Or the confidence to make those decisions in your business. So that's what I'm here to do is to help you, help you be confident in what you're doing. I can't tell you exactly how, I mean, I can tell you how I did it, but you're not going to do it how I did it, right. Cause you're not me. But what I can do is help you see yourself and know that you know more than you think you do. You need, you know, you need to be you in this world and be confident in your skill set and your expertise in your experiences and run with it. Because there's all these mediocre white men running around doing things they have no business doing. So why not you? Yeah. So when you go in, you know, certain spaces where, you, like you said, there isn't that black woman in that space. But when you go there, do you feel comfortable? What's that experience like? I would say that I'm comfortable because I'm comfortable with myself. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I always I, first, you know, when I would be in these spaces, I would feel a little uncomfortable because I thought I had no business being there. I'm not you know, I don't have an MBA. I don't have, you know, 40 people on my team. I don't have, you know, I, I, I didn't, I, I came about this whole million dollar business in a very unconventional way. Right. And so then what I, but I, what I have to remind myself is I'm me. No one, none of these people can be me. None of these people have my experiences or my skill set or even my expertise. So I am me. And if they don't like it, that's not my problem. Right. So as long as you're comfortable and confident in what you bring to the table, then no, I have no problem with it. Do you have any advice for women who are, you know, they're a little afraid to just show who they really are? 
I think a lot of times, even just thinking about going on, let's say, um, social media, a lot of women are afraid of trolls and, you know, the type of backlash they will, they might get just trying to put themselves out there. So, you know, there's a, a lot of barriers to women just being their authentic selves. But what would your advice be to that woman? Listen, there is nobody like you. No one can be you. But I also like to think that, and, you know, maybe I'm saying, maybe I'm saying this out of, (laughs) maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I always like to think that like energy attracts like energy. So I don't have trolls, right? So I don't have trolls because I am really, what you see is what you get. I'm being very authentic. And so I may have people who may not agree with things I say or what I do or whatever, then that's fine. Don't follow me. Right. But, um, the people who are for me are for me and what's for me is for me. Right. So I don't concern myself with trolls. I don't concern myself what other people are doing. I just keep my eyes on my prize and that's it. But I'm paying attention to my peripheral. You know, I always liken this whole journey to driving you know you have to get from point A to point B. So you need to focus on how you're going to get to point B. But if you're driving, you can't just look straight ahead and then think, no, you got to pay attention to what's happening around you. But you can't focus on what what, what the person in the next lane is doing. Otherwise, you're going to crash yourself, right? So I just focus on getting to my point B. So that means for me, I focus on my goals and I put out the energy I want to receive, So whenever people reach out to me and say, Vivian, I love you. You know, you make me feel good. And I'm like, darling, I'm just a reflection. I am just a reflection because you allow me to be me. Then that, you know, it gives you permission to to shine too, right? So when you see me shining brightly, I'm inadvertently giving you permission to do the same. So look for people, follow people who are genuine, who are doing the things you want to do, who are... You know, and watch them closely because everyone can be stunting with their Lambos and their Gucci and their man and their this and their that. But that's what they're showing on Instagram is highlights, right? Really, really study them before you oh, hashtag goals. Everybody's not hashtag goals. Go and make your own goals. I, I don't study. I don't study the trolls because I don't attract them. And so you need to focus on what brings you joy. You need to focus on what brings you strength, what gives you inspiration, what motivates you to be your bigger and better self. Because you, you only have one, this one life to live. If you want to sit down and compare yourself to this girl and that girl and what they do, I'm not doing So what? Everybody's not supposed to like you anyways. You can't, you don't even like everybody. Why do you expect everybody to like you? So you need to focus on the people who like you to the people who give you life and surround yourself with those types of people because that's the only way you're going to do well in life is if you surround yourself with people who who accept you for who you are. If you're over 50 pounds and you think you're, do that. Like, don't mind them. Don't mind. You know, a lot of people waste so much time minding these people. Why are you letting them take up space in your head like that? Just, you know, <laughs> I have one life to live. I'm gonna You've live got it. no time. To it. <laughs> I intend to leave it. <laughs> You have no time for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I would love for you to tell the audience, how can they find you? Are you working on any projects that we can support you with or possibly to look out for in the near future? Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, well, I am an absolute pleasure to follow on Instagram. <laughs> so you can follow me on It's Vivian K I T S V I V I A N K A Y E. And then there's my business, which is Kinky Curly Yaki. It is the premium textured hair extensions brand for black women. And it sounds, it's spelt exactly how it sounds. So Kinky Curly Yaki. And then some, you know, things you're seeing from me in the future. Uh, I'm a host of a new podcast that's um, dropping in October called Build It Braver. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's presented by American Express Canada. So it's a podcast where I interview uh, entrepreneurs, so either small business owners, and then I pair them with other business owners who are further down the road. So entrepreneurs who have done big things and you know smaller businesses that are looking to do those big things and get advice on how they can do that and build their business braver. So that's uh, that's happening in the fall. Um, you know, doing a lot more TV work. Uh, you know, doing a, a, a YouTube series. Uh, you can watch me on YouTube. I've got about forty videos on YouTube uh, called "Mind Your Business," <laughs> where I help you. Um, you know, where I, I talk about everything from e-commerce to empowerment to entrepreneurship. And everything in between to help you be your best self. So look out for me on Instagram, YouTube, uh, and on your podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Fantastic. Fantastic. Vivian, it has been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for coming on the Africana Woman podcast. We will be looking out for the podcast, your podcast, which sounds very, very exciting. And just thank you so much. You are absolutely welcome. Thank you for having me. I learned so much from Auntie Viv and I cannot wait for Angkor to come along. eh? (laughs) Vivian is such an inspiring success story of migrating to a new country in hopes of a better life and actually achieving your parents' wildest dreams. For all the sacrifices they have made, anything is possible. It is about that time that we celebrate our guest. Please find Vivian K on Instagram at it's Vivian K. If you are a business owner, I strongly recommend you watch Vivian's videos on YouTube called Mind My Business and also listen to her podcast, Business Class, Build It Braver. The links are in the show notes. Tell her you heard her on the Africana Woman podcast and let her know what you learned. I promise you that I would tell you more about what is happening in the Africana woman world. Here goes. We are launching the Africana Woman Network. So it will no longer just be yours truly, but we will have phenomenal talent leading other shows within the network. Truth be told, I don't know how it will come together. I just know that this is the next step in our journey. So you'll be introduced to other shows at the 100th episode of Celebration. There is still more. As you know, we have a vibrant community called Africana Women Visionaries. For the last two years, our events have been held virtually. You know, we've been doing things online. But starting June 1st, we will have our first physical hub for Africana women visionaries right here at Kumushi Garden in Kabwe. This space is your sanctuary, a place to relax or work when you need a change of scenery. We will have in-person programming as our goal is always to give you practical skills to improve your lives and your business. And of course, you will network in the way that we do best with other phenomenal Africana women. If you would like to sign up for membership, you will find the link in the show notes. We have packages for students, queens, and even corporate bodies. Make sure you check it out. Ladies, 2022. We are not holding back. (laughs) Let's put ourselves all out there. My playground is Instagram. So find me at Chulu by Design. Tag me, tell your friends about the Africana Woman podcast. And again, leave a review, especially on Apple podcast, because that helps us spread the word about this show to more African sisters out there. So talk to you soon. This has been a production of Africana Woman Media. (laughs) 